Good afternoon, 2020 APSI virtual conference attendees. My name is Will Freed, and I'm presenting with my colleague, Luke Barber, this afternoon about a self-advocate's guide to transformational leadership. In this APSI talk, Luke and I are going to be talking about what transformational leadership is, the five best practices of transformational leadership, how we have used transformational leadership as self-advocates, and some resources for you guys to help self-advocates with transformational leadership. So now like, I'm just going to talk brief about myself. So my name is Will Freed, and I'm currently a graduate assistant in accessibility services at Fort Hayes State University in Hayes, Kansas, where I'm working on my master's in higher education. And I'm also a recent graduate from Salisbury University in Maryland with a bachelor's degree in conflict analysis and dispute resolution, as well as a national disability advocate on the autism spectrum. Here are just some pictures of some friends and colleagues that have helped go above and beyond. So I'm able to be the disability advocate that I am now. Hi, my name is Blake Barber. I'm a self-advocate with, with an autism spectrum diagnosis. I'm currently working two jobs as a bagger at Schnucks and as a self-determination instructor at Easter Seals Midwest. I also am currently a political candidate for state representative district 89, which if elected in November, 2020, will be based in Jefferson City, Missouri. While at the University of Missouri, St. Louis, with the help of others, I founded a student advocacy group called Able Disabled Partnership. I'm currently studying social work, public policy. What is transformational leadership? It is a leadership style where leaders encourage, inspire, and motivate others and create change that will help shape and grow organizations. With transformational leadership in organizations, it gives supervisors from the executive level to have a lot of trust in their trained employees to help them make change for the future of the organization. Now I'm just gonna talk briefly about the five best practices of transformational leadership and give you guys some background. So when I was a college student at Salisbury University, I took a leadership class called Learning and Leadership by Dr. Ron Sires in the Department of Secondary Education and Physical Education, where I was taught the five best practices of transformational leadership, which comes out of the book, The Leadership Challenge by Barry Posner and James Kuzis, who are leadership scholars at Santa Clara University that have been working on this transformational leadership practices for over 30 years together. As I took the course, I started to incorporate them into my disability advocacy and realized other disability advocates need to be taught the five best practices of transformational leadership to be the man in the arena. After I started learning them, I then taught the five best practices to Luke Barber who incorporated them into his leadership. And one of the takeaways that I want people to take away here is that I want organizational leaders to be able to teach self advocates leadership skills, especially transformational leadership. So the five best practices of transformational leadership are the first one is model the way, which is about leaders creating standards of excellence and behaviors for others to follow and making sure that leaders can take other younger leaders under their wing and create a path for them to grow so they're able to be in their shoes later in their career. The second one is inspire to share vision. This is about leaders coming together and visioning what the future can be in organizations to be exciting and come together for common goals. Challenge the process is about leaders looking at ways to challenge themselves and innovate themselves to take risks for the organization and be able to accept failure and challenges. Enables others to act is about fostering collaboration organizations and creating an atmosphere of trust to strengthen each other. Encourage the heart, which is the least practiced one is about realizing it takes hard work to accomplish extraordinary things in organizations. It is important for leaders to recognize others' contributions to their work to become part of the winning team together. How we use the leadership practices in our personal experience. As a co-president and founder of Able Disabled Partnership at University of Missouri-St. Louis, 
I have used Model the Way by using my personal example of disability advocacy as a self-advocate. Many said I wouldn't be able to do college because of my uh, learning difficulties, because of my autism diagnosis. I talk about my values and principles that guide my actions, the view that I am capable and of greater ability than what is recognized. People often focus on the dis of disability, not what we can do. Um, these current societal norms should not be the way that it currently is. And we understand that a cultural shift is needed to recognize disability for the strengths and ways that people overcome barriers. We have created a um, shared vision because we know that people with disabilities are not currently considered the experts in the field of disability. People often talk about accessibility and inclusion, but don't really back it up with real action. Um, currently, it's been all talk, but we want people to walk the walk. Um, and we have enabled others in the process because by having transparency and votes on the actions of the club, um, it gives people choice and options. Uh, we also give each other tasks and delegate the roles accordingly. And we have a variety of diversity um, within the disability community within our club because we have so many people from various disabilities within it. Uh, by doing so, we have been able to understand the differences between the different styles, as well as encourage each other to become self-advocates, to be able to advocate for the needs they have, as well as the needs of others. And now I'm gonna talk about the fourth leadership um, be practice called challenge the process and I used challenge the process a lot while I was a student at Salisbury University to change the culture on disability. So um, I used challenge the process to overcome obstacles during my time at Salisbury University as a leader with a disability to challenge the university that students with disabilities need a space where they can come together because like during my time when I started at Salisbury University there was only a disability resource center which was a confidential space and it was not a space for other students with disabilities to come together and work on projects and advocacy together. And this had me challenge the process by standing up to the campus wide diversity and inclusion consortium on committee about why this should the students with disabilities be given a space. And I could have given up and hit a wall and not wanted to challenge myself, but I wanted to have the toughness to keep on going because I learned by challenging myself and others that you can become comfortable at being uncomfortable. And, and the fifth and final practice that I'm going to talk about is encourage the heart, which I use to help change the disability culture. So with encourage the heart, when I finally helped Salisbury University get a space for students with disabilities, I thanked everyone from the bottom of my heart, which included the university administration, faculty, staff, and friends from this university who helped make this happen. Because I wanted to let everyone know that they played a part because we are all in this together mentality. It's not about me. It's about collaborating and encouraging others that we can all do this together to make a better community for people with disabilities. So here are some resources um, about books about transformational leadership for, for you guys to use. So the first one is called Calling Up by J.P. Nurbin, who runs an organization called the Thrive on Challenge, which is about building inclusive cultures and helping sports teams overcome struggles in their team culture to helping them go above and beyond and create a positive culture. And, and, and this book gives a lot of great examples about how disability advocates can create an inclusive culture. The second one is the Leadership Challenge, which is the one that has the five best practices of transformational leadership and Organizational leaders and self advocates can learn a lot in here by using the five best practices of transformational leadership in your everyday life. And the third one here is Raise Your Game by Alan Stein, which is about a book which includes about how leaders such as Mark Cuban, who's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, and Steph Curry have helped raise their game. Mark Cuban, in this book, it talks about how he renovated the locker room to have more trust in his players after they were having a struggling season and it helped them by upgrading their locker room for them to be able to be better successful and Stephen Curry in here raised the, his game 
while he went to Davidson College, which was not a great basketball program at the time and helped raise the profile of the program to make them great. And another one here, Every Moment Matters by John O'Sullivan talks about how coaches have built successful team cultures. And one of them is the University of North Carolina women's soccer coach Anson Dorrance talks about how he's had successful teams and successful cultures. And, and reading this book can help display advocates and organization leaders look at examples of great cultures and foster them in their own organization. And the final one is the Team Captain's Leadership Manual, which is has like a 10 week course in there about how you can create a whole leadership academy and apply it to self advocates for disabilities and train them to become leaders. And this is an incredible resource to look at. And um, here's our contact information.